Have you ever found yourself elbow deep in a bag of family-sized potato chips? Or maybe at the end of a long day, you find yourself staring at the bottom of a pint of ice cream and thought to yourself, how did it come to this? We've all been there. As a matter of fact, I faced a very similar circumstance this past Monday. So let's talk about it and finally figure out how we can end binge eating once and for all. Welcome to the Fat Loss Simplified Podcast. Do you dream of feeling fit, confident, and comfortable in your own skin? Are you ready to say goodbye to stubborn belly fat once and for all? Ever imagine confidently slipping into your favorite pair of jeans only to feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and inconsistent in your fat loss efforts because the chaos of life got in your way? Well, that just happened for the last time. Hi, I'm Bryce Hamilton. I used to work 80 hours a week as a school teacher, barely finding time for myself, let alone for fitness and nutrition. I felt trapped in my body, wishing I could be fully present with my family without worrying about how I looked. But I didn't have the time, energy, or self-discipline to add another thing to my already jam-packed schedule. That is, until I discovered I could look and feel my best in less time with strength training and flexible eating. In this podcast, you'll discover quick and easy meal prep ideas, macro hacks, and time-efficient workout routines so you can prioritize yourself just like you prioritize everyone else. So grab a coffee and your favorite snack and let's start boosting your confidence today. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that I've opened a free community for women who are looking to increase their confidence in their body in less time. If you feel like you're trying to fit meal planning, exercise routines, and all the things into the margins of your life and want a supportive community to help move you forward, this is for you. We share weekly meal planning ideas, celebrate our wins, and much more. Join us by clicking the Join the Community link in the show notes below. See you there. Okay, so when it comes to binge eating, typically the reason why somebody binge eats is for one of two reasons. And we're going to talk about both of those today, and I'm going to tell you which one I dealt with this past week and how to overcome it. But first, let's start off with the psychological reasons. For some people, the reason why they binge eat is purely psychological. And when I say that, I'm not downplaying it at all. Actually, this is very real. It's a very real challenge. And I'm not going to sit here today and say just something like, well, it's just in your minds. No, these are very real struggles that each and every one of us deal with. For example, earlier this year, I had a conversation on this show with another coach and he told me in that conversation that he really enjoyed donuts. And so whenever he was tempted to binge, it was to binge on donuts. And the psychological reason behind that that he gave was because whenever he would go over to his grandma's house, his grandma would either have donuts or take him out for donuts. And so it was just a very comforting experience for him, going out with grandma, enjoying some time, enjoying a donut. And so now today... Whenever he's in a stressful environment, his body will crave comfort. And so what his brain goes to is it reaches back to that comfort that he felt whenever he would go and visit and spend time with his grandma while eating donuts. And so psychologically, what came up for him is that he would be tempted to binge on donuts. And so there's the psychological reason of comfort. And maybe that's the reason why you struggle with binge eating. Now, if this is a struggle for you, then here's what I would recommend doing. The next time you find yourself tempted to binge eat, ask yourself this question. Am I eating because I'm hungry or am I eating because I'm anxious? If you're eating because you are hungry, then hold on, I'm going to give you another reason why you're probably binge eating. But if you're eating because you're anxious, then what I want you to do is I want you to go for a walk and spend that walk reflecting on why you're anxious. And another way that you can go about solving your anxiety rather than binge eating. And how to get somebody out of that mindset is different for everybody. So I can't just sit here and say, well, do this to not be anxious. You really need to put some thought behind, why am I anxious? Why does that anxiety drive me to eat? And what can I do for myself that will work 
in order to replace that anxiety. So go for a walk that first time, really figure that out. And maybe the thing for you is just getting out of the house, going for a walk in nature and enjoying your time. And maybe that alleviates some of the anxiety and the desire to binge as well. And if that becomes the thing that works for you, then that's great. And I'm super pumped that you got that figured out. Now, that also brings us to a second psychological reason that you might be struggling with binge eating. And for this one, I'm actually going to outsource. I'm going to recommend that you find a therapist and an expert that specializes in exactly what I'm about to talk about so that you can overcome your binge eating and unlock the doors to a happier and healthier you. I know that sounds cliche, but you literally will be happier And you literally will be healthier if you can solve this problem. And that is, it could be that the psychological reason that you're binge eating is because you had some type of eating disorder in the past. And so I also want you to ask yourself, not only am I hungry, am I anxious, but also, did you have some kind of really poor relationship with food in the past? Because what might be happening psychologically is that in the past, you're used to starving yourself. And now that you're feeding yourself appropriately, psychologically, that's playing tricks on you. And maybe a normal amount of food that is good and healthy for you seems exorbitant. And so actually, for you, you're not binging, but you just feel like you are. And you are kind of in a prison of guilt and anxiety because you feel like you're binging, but you're actually eating normally. Now, if that's your situation, then first of all, I want to congratulate you that you are trying to better yourself. The fact that you're eating enough to drive those feelings means that at some point you were aware enough of those tendencies and you are right now trying to fix them. Now, that doesn't stop those feelings automatically, which is why I recommend working with a therapist, working with somebody that can really help you improve your relationship psychologically with food so that you can eat normal amounts without guilt, without feeling like you're binging, and unlock the doors to a literal happier because you don't have that guilt and healthier you because you're eating enough to be able to fuel healthy bodily functions. But there is also another reason why you might be struggling with binge eating, and it has absolutely nothing to do with psychology. It actually has to do with what I dealt with this week. And that is this past Monday, I really struggled to make healthy choices Because we had gotten to the end of our groceries and we had absolutely no food in the house. And so by the time the end of the day rolled around, my wife got home and she brought the groceries home with her because the grocery store is on her way home from work. And when she brought the groceries in the door, what was my temptation? My temptation was to eat all the things that we didn't need to cook that were fast and expedient foods, which are mostly fats and carbs, right? A lot of the proteins need to be prepared, whether they be eggs or meats. You got to take the time to cook those. But by the time she got home, I was so hungry that I wanted to eat something and I wanted to eat it now. So what am I reaching for? I'm reaching for chips, I'm reaching for brownies, I'm reaching for all the things except for the things that I know that I should be eating, especially since I hadn't eaten much during the day. And you might be thinking, well, how does that apply to me? Well, this applies to you if you're in a situation where you have been dieting and you are constantly thinking to yourself, how can I eat less? But every time you try to eat less because you're trying to lose fat, you end up feeling super hungry, and then you end up being tempted to binge. And then when you binge, you think to yourself, man, I just wasn't disciplined enough. And so then what you do is you go back to the drawing board, try to re-engage with your fat loss efforts. But this time you think to yourself, well, I just need to make up for the extra calories that I ate by eating less. And then you start that cycle over again. You end up feeling super hungry because you're starving yourself. And then you end up being tempted to binge. Then you do, because at some point, the desire to eat becomes irresistible. And then again, you think to yourself, I just don't have the willpower, but I'm going to try again. And then you try to eat even less. And that cycle repeats itself over and over again. When you really shouldn't be focused on, how can I eat less? You should be focused on, 
how much can I eat while still seeing progress? And the answer to that question is first, you need to discover what your maintenance calories are. Now, for more details on that, you can go back and listen to episode number 30, where I talked about that exact same topic. But without knowing what your maintenance calories are, you're always going to be guessing how few calories can I eat and get results. But what a lot of people do is they end up overreacting. They end up eating somewhere between 12 to 1400 calories, and then they starve themselves and go into this binge cycle, when in reality they could probably eat somewhere around 18 to 2,000 calories and still see progress. Now, it might not be like lightning fast progress, but you're going to see more quality progress because the weight that you're losing will be coming from fat rather than from muscle because the more you undereat as well, the more your body overreacts and tries to correct the situation. And so guess what your body does? Your body gets rid of the tissue that is more expensive, that requires more calories to maintain. And guess what? That isn't fat, that's muscle. And so by starving yourself, not only are you encouraging this binge cycle, but at the same time, you're also likely losing more muscle than you are fat and complicating your body composition situation. So the best thing you can do is take some time to just figure out what is my maintenance And after you figure that out, you can then reduce your calories, starting with a reduction of about 300 calories. And if you see the scale start to move, then you know that you're now in a deficit. And if you now feel better while in that deficit and you're not tempted to binge because you're actually eating enough, that your body's not going to fight against you. It's not going to rebel against the amount that you're feeding it because you're feeding it enough that it thinks, well, this is less than normal, but not so much less that we need to do anything about it. And so you'll probably feel mildly hungry, but you won't be starving to the point where you're driven to the binge. And this is the exact process that we're going to be walking people through in the revitalize your metabolism phase of the fat loss simplified system. And we're going to start that and get that rolling in about a month. So if you want to have first access to that, go ahead and become a Fat Loss Simplified Insider down in the show notes below. We'll be sure to let you know when that rolls out next month. In the meantime, if you do struggle with binge eating periodically, I just want to encourage you to sit back and reflect. Of the reasons that I gave today why you might be binge eating, which one is the most likely scenario for you? And once you've identified your scenario, then go ahead and take the appropriate action so that you can start seeing things move forward in the right direction for you so that you can rid yourself of binge eating once and for all. And once again, thank you for joining me here and I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, could you just take 30 seconds to share it with a friend who may be looking for a way to lose weight and build confidence in their body using sustainable methods? Your recommendation can truly make a difference for them. Also, please take a moment to leave a review of the show. Your feedback helps me know this podcast is helping you and inspires me to keep creating valuable content. Now keep making progress by showing up for yourself and I'll be back with another episode of Fat Loss Simplified soon. See you then.